Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Bob. I got a message for you today. I want to talk again about the uh, resurrection. And like I said in previous videos, there are multiple unique, exciting, fun, cool ways to study the Bible. But there's also the same applies to doctrine. And certainly resurrection is a great, wonderful doctrine, if you will, or belief that um, Orthodox Christianity has um, going for it. Um, and you could have, you could do whatever you want. You know, the Bible, in my opinion, and this isn't really talked up enough, but, you know, there really needs to be more encouragement coming from the pulpit. Pastors are so important, don't get me wrong, but we need we need real encouragement. That's why Joel Osteen, you know, I, I don't agree with everything he's about. I loved his dad, you know, <laughs> more than him, believe it or not. I just knew his dad because his dad was on the television uh, a, a lot. But Osteen connects. He's an encourager. There's really n not much encouragement going out there. I mean, he's an encourager from from Jump Street, right? Right at the top, other than, you know, the joke. Why do, why do pastors always have to tell a joke in the beginning? I don't know. But I wanted to talk today about the resurrection and happiness. Happiness, you know, that age old, you know, uh, before we had memes, we had these little things out there, a t-shirt, whatever, bumper sticker, happiness is this, happiness is that, right? Well, happiness is the resurrection, if you think about it. I mean, it the resurrection has now become available to everybody because of what Jesus did. And and that should make you happy because no matter what happens in the world, you know, and, and you know, 99% of the time we're going to struggle here and there, you know, on a daily basis. Sure, we, I mean, I look at my life, right? I mean, I could, you could say the, make the argument I struggled every day my whole life. Then you can say, well, there are periods of time where things were going really good for a long time, you know, even like nowadays, I think things are going pretty good, you know, but look at all the uh, missed opportunity in my life, you know, not, not knowing the Bible early and not, um, being confident, having, uh, you know, in school, you know, having problems, um, in school is such a dark place in my opinion. Um, you know, uh, you know, turning to drinking and, and whatnot um, on the weekends and stuff. But, but con you know, in school, in my opinion, conduct is probably the most important subject other than learning. And since learning nowadays is, is skewed where they don't even let you, it's all, you know, you're all fed. You're fed a diet of certain stuff. And like we've always said, you know, why am I learning algebra? You know what I mean? Why am I learning Latin? Why am I learning Spanish? I mean, I'm, I, you know, um, all this, all this things we were learning back then, but was, was the redeeming social value. Um, but, you know, we, we should have been taught the things of God. The Bible was taken out of school a long time ago. Like, I don't know, it, it was... It was, I think, 64, you know, was banned by the Supreme Court. And since then, the America's gone to hell. I mean, 62 is when they took um, school prayer out. And I, I should do, I think I should have a video on this. I've done so many videos, but um, I should, I should have, I should get a list so I can have it at my fingertips. But I end up hitting on like multiple subjects. But I like to stick to one point for each video. And the point here today, and here I go, I'm doing it again, but happiness is the resurrection you know where is thou sting death death has been defeated because of what jesus did the almighty god he is god <clears throat> god the father god the son god the holy spirit and he's not just mighty he's almighty and and uh, he rose from the grave and that same power as i said in one of my last videos is in in us and if you read the book of ephesians it touches on these things. And those two videos ago where I, I, um, I read like the first three chapters of the book of Ephesians. And <clears throat> so, so I wanted to just say for, for people who are um, trying to find happiness, 
you're going to have some success. You're going to have that, you know, you could wake up and everything's great. Uh, and then you look in the mirror and you're not happy anymore. You know, look at all the divorces, you know. I mean, I look at myself, I'm like, gee, you know, I have a lot of things going for myself. And then I'm like, I'm sick of myself. <laughs> you know, I can only be Im imagine what it would be like married to me, you know. Um, you know, it, it's great one day and then, you know, I mean, we, we got to have something enduring. We got to have something based in reality and um, something that meets our needs. And that, the resurrection does all these things. And the promise of the resurrection is verifiable, as I've said multiple times in other videos, you know, from an objective viewpoint. It's it's just not subjectivism and Bible, you know, and circular reason and all that stuff. You can break out of that and see that you can trust the Bible as being from God. But what does the resurrection message mean? You're going to have a glorified body while well, you're going to live forever. In, 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 and so right now you can have what's called Shiloh, peace and joy. You know, it says rest in peace when we die, right? That's what everybody's saying, right? We can rest in peace now with Shiloh because of these things, because of the things of God. You know, and what's the best man can do when somebody dies? Well, it's rip, right? Rest in peace. Well, you can rest in peace now. That's what Shiloh means, okay? There's rest, you know, the Bible talks about we can take our rest in him, a Sabbath day's rest. In Christ, you read about that in uh, Hebrews uh, 3 and 4. You can check that out. But So you're going to have eternal life. Eternal life is forever, guys. I mean, how can this compare to anything we can get uh, on earth, you know? And whatever we get on earth is fleeting. And, and, and you know, some of the greatest minds know that most success occurs after multiple failures, you know. And, and, uh, and sometimes, I guess... Um, there's one saying by Al James Altucher, he has a great, it's secular, but a, a great um, a l little um, website where he, where he gives advice and stuff to, to people, in, um, you know, with their careers and stuff. And he says, you know, success is, it, it, fail, failure is part of life and it's punctuated by briefest success, you know. Um, John Tudor Jones, the, the greatest traitor who ever lived, they say. He's still alive. He lives in uh, Greenwich, Connecticut. I think he's got his famous um, <clears throat> hedge fund company. You know, he went and he went to the Bronx and he went and he talked to people and the kids and he thought, you know, if we just teach them up, they'll be great, you know. And, and he's he was telling them that the problem, you know, his great one of his great messages, schools don't talk about failure, you know, and and, and failure is needs to be addressed it's 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 okay to fail in life all right and and uh but we our own self um image is based on our ability to be successful and glorified in this world but we can be glorified in the next world okay and with the glorified body right and, and durable you know more gray hair right teeth perfect i love all these <laughs> i'm looking at my teeth in these videos but you see these these people who really have these cottage industries on YouTube and they, they got the, like, I don't want to mention any names, <laughs> but the white teeth, I mean, they're 70 years old and they get these perfect white teeth. I'm saying to myself, you got to be kidding me. And it looks so odd. I mean, I'd rather have, rather it look a little bit more like you lived, lived and, and taken a few punches in life, you know, but uh, I mean, it, it, it looks horrible. <laughs> then there's this guy, he, he's got this great, um, oh, he's a great, um, guitarist and, and and he's 70 something and he's got the red hair perfect mane and uh somebody i didn't even realize it but somebody mentioned in, in you know how the, they leave a note that he 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 has a wig and i was like wow it's so good that one i would admit it it, it looks pretty good but you look you, then you watch the video again because he does this amazing guitar solo uh, one of my favorite songs but it, actually it's 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 peg so if you check out the guy his name's jay something or other very very talented man and uh anyway getting back to we we're going to be glorified so what does the resurrection give us it gives us glory in, in heaven glorified bodies in heaven we're going to live on the streets of gold the bible says okay you can trust the bible now now that you've verified it you know and i've proven that you know 
in other videos, you look at the life of Alexander the Great and the Septuagint and how all the prophecies, 300 prophecies about Jesus were fulfilled. And we know the Old Testament was in existence 300 years before Christ. And then we have, what do we have? We have Simon Greenleaf. The, the law, I just, I see this every video, the, the law professor, the royal law professor of Harvard who founded Harvard Law, the greatest, you know, law, law school in, in the world. You can make the argument, top 10, right? Anyway, he says you can prove the resurrection based on eyewitness testimony. How did that happen? In any U.S. court. All right, so he wrote the book, guy uh, testimony of the evangelist so you can check that out or just google that and do some digging yourself so once you get to that point you trust the bible you can see that we're gonna have glorified bodies we're gonna, we have immortality eternal life is a present possession we're already citizens in heaven right now you know you read ephesians you can learn about that and you can do bible study just on the citizens of heaven so that's what's being offered to us okay and into the church this is the church age so anybody can believe Anybody, you know, believe in Jesus and you will be saved. You know, all of us, you know, fall short of the glory of God, right? And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And, you know, this is the Roman road I'm giving you. That was Romans 6. Romans 3 is, you know, all of us have fallen short. Nobody's perfect, but we're sinners because of the sin of one man. We inherited this condition so we're all in this boat we're in the titanic it's sinking we need a life preserver and that's jesus okay and he's he's saving he, you know we're dead we're already going down he he's rescuing us you know with his words going forth and and, and the word is life john chapter six okay so this is what's going on right now you know it's really not your fault but that's the situation we're in because of the sin of one man adam and and we're all sinners we're all born in in a fallen condition so we're held responsible so that's where responsibility fits in to the sovereignty of god in the fall of man okay and, and it's god's will that's being done and our will is freed once the word of god comes into our life and impacts us that's what the only time we have free will is after the word of god pushes us and we make that decision okay adam had free will in the garden book as far as uh, us you know, our will cannot escape the fall of man. And this A.W. Pink says we we're fallen, okay? So the resurrection, going back to what I was just saying, we're going to have, you know, communion with God, communion with the other saints in heaven. We're going to judge angels. And then in the book of Ephesians, right, we see that in the ages to come, there's, you know, God showing his mercy. That's the whole meaning of life, that good is, is, is that he is good and good trumps evil you know genesis going back to genesis 50 20 what you meant for evil god meant for good okay that's like the big theme of the bible in my opinion okay you know uh put in a comment you, you, what you let me know what you think about that and then you see in romans 9 ages to come there so there's ages to come it says it multiple times in ephesians one two and three it also talks about the riches of our inheritance Okay, three or four, at least three times in the book of Ephesians, chapters one, two, and three. Just did a study on that about two weeks ago. I mean, two, uh, two days ago. Didn't really hit on the riches of the inheritance. I was going to withhold that to an, uh, another separate uh, video, but why not bring it up right now? Because, you know, we're storing up riches in heaven. And, you know, you don't want to sin now because it affects your, your rewards in heaven. Plus, you, you got to deal with the problems here because it causes problems in your own life so it's not about you know being in uh, somebody who who's carefree and, and feels like they can sin you know savoir faire whatever it were <laughs> say la vie right i'm speaking french um okay sarah sarah <laughs> what else you got but you know that's what a, a lie you know you cannot keep sinning you know the holy spirit helps you you know you're going to sin anyway because we're falling all right but you don't want to have license to sin all right but if you do sin god is your advocate jesus is your advocate okay and he's also your judge he went to the cross for you you believed in him you believed in that blood you know that's what a life is and 
life was spilled for you, okay? And you're justified before God the moment you believe and you cross over from death to life. All right, and that's the good news. You have eternal life at that point, can be never taken away from you. Okay, so you, that's what the gospel is: is this message to be believed or not to believe? It's not this other message that you hear, like you know, a ton of popular churches right now twist. You know, you got to read the book. Um, it's a, it's about because this, this is a, a subject that I find, you know, kept rearing its ugly head in my life. Grace, salvation, and discipleship. Um, by Charles C. Bing, and there's a companion book called Lordship Salvation, and it's against the Lordship Salvation point of view. You know, salvation is free. Grace is free, okay? We're not to abuse it, okay? Of course, we know that, but we get it for free. That's the whole message. We believe it, and we are saved at that point. And then there's sanctification, but these guys, they twist the scriptures, and they end up condemning you. And that's why Joel Osteen is so popular because he's encouraging you and where all these pastors are out there, you know, aim, taking aim at you instead of taking aim at the world, right, and leading the church, you know, they're afraid of picking, you know, because of they've been bought off with the 501c3 church. Let's, let's face it, they, they can't afford to equip the saints to impact the world and inform them, and if they don't make a big deal of social issues and injustices, and the, the, you know, the, the certainly the, the the saints aren't gonna, you know, because we're kind of like sheep. We, if they if the pastor doesn't make a big deal, then we're not gonna make a big deal. But then also the the politicians ain't gonna care either because they don't have to. They don't fear God anymore. They don't fear the church anymore. And the church is toothless and milk toast and pussyfooting around. And they don't even vote as a result. And there's no voting block anymore. I mean, I think, still think we are the biggest voting block, but we're not galvanized and, and, and we're not heard. Let's face it. And uh, these, these states, they end up gerrymandering all the districts. So even if you have a slight majority, you know, certain parties end up staying in. Uh, control because of all the gerrymandering. Look at look at the the state districts. They're ridiculous. How they they twist and turn. They look like salamanders, and, and that's where they get it from gerrymandering. And that's almost going on. I think in a, every every uh, state where it's important to to um, manipulate uh, the people. So you're gonna have a state like my state is sixty forty Democrat Republic, but the representation is ninety ten. Democrat to Republican because of the gerrymandering. That's the evils of man playing out and the powers that be, you know, having their way. But, you know, you're not going to have to worry about any of that. Just believe in Jesus. You know, we should be salt and light of the earth and, and, and try to change this, this world and, and, and uh, you know, but but let's face it, the, the, the uh, rapture's coming and Armageddon's coming. You know, Russia's intervening in Venezuela. Trump's, you know, what's he going to do there, you know? Well, the Monroe Doctrine basically said, everybody, you know, stay out of uh, our hemisphere, right? Well, now you got Russian meddling over here. It could be, uh, you know, you know um, another uh, missile crisis like Cuba, the Cuban Missile Crisis all over again. So, um, but my perspective today, my, my point of, you know, I wanted to just reemphasize in closing, is that the resurrection is our happiness. And that's how you look at Easter. Every day should be Easter, right? Or, or I don't even want to use that word, resurrection day. <laughs> and it, it's a happy, joyous thing for what Jesus did for us. We can live forever. That's what we need. We can, you know, we can have the food we need. We're going to have the housing we need. You know, and then and God, God's coming back. He's going to reign for a thousand years, all right? And we're going to rule and reign with Christ. That's what the Bible says. So you got to know about these things, okay? The rapture's coming, you know? And, and Jesus is coming for the church. The second coming of Christ involves catching up with those we call righteous. We're only righteous because we believe, what's, you know? And, and you have a righteousness by faith, Romans chapter 2 and 3 explains in detail. So once you believe you're 100% righteous, God will never remember your sins anymore from east to the west. He's removed them. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. So that's the message today is the resurrection is our happiness. And that's what we have to be.
thankful for and thinking about and have something to share for others in the hope for for everlasting life because what what we deal with here you know pales in comparison to the greatness ahead of time it's like stubbing your toe in the morning you feel the pain and then at afternoon you don't feel it again you know unless you get older you kind of <laughs> but uh that's the message today is is just to have that focus and 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 base your you put your mind in reality not in and you know the, we're overloaded with the internet and the, we're all on social media but we, we our perspective gets warped as a result but we need to continually that's why we need to continue to read the bible and talk to each other and fellowship and, and spur each other on and have messages of hope for each other. We give you, you know, greet each other with a psalm. I don't know about a holy kiss, <laughs> but uh, that's that's what we got to do. We got to got to build each other up, encourage each other. You know, the pastors really aren't doing that right now. Joel Osteen is, and that's why he's successful. You know, he's reaching people that, I mean, he, I was in work today this week, and he's reaching the people in that work. And they're understanding the message, you know, about importance of having a relationship with Jesus, okay? They might not know the difference between a five-point Calvinist and a four-point Calvinist, right? Or free will and sovereignty of God or, or post-tribulation verse. You know what I mean? Uh, or, or you, you, <laughs> but, but he's reaching these people, you know? And I hope they get saved, you know, as much as I am a critic of Joel Osteen. He's reaching the people because he's encouraging the folks. And, and they're not getting it anywhere. All right, on that note, we're going to sign off. We'll have a great rest of your day, and we'll talk again hopefully tomorrow. God willing, Deo Valente. Here's a Latin word. <laughs> Enough of that French. Have a great one.